What do we think about Daytona 500 uh, winners? Who's going to win this race? Is, you know, Denny had a great point on his show. You'll get lucky one time at Daytona, but you're not going to get lucky twice. That's right. He had like a top five or a top ten. Yes, he did. He had. There, to, he said if if Rex didn't factor yeah. in, here's who would be in the top five. If there isn't a crash that takes any of these contenders out. Here's your top five. Right. I'm. I'm going to try to think here. He said himself. Mm-hmm. He's right. He said uh, Brad Keselowski. He's right. He said Ryan Blaney. Yes. He said uh, William Byron and Joey Logano. That's right. I like the Logano. Byron, I'm not 100% on him. I mean, Denny's out there racing with the guy. Byron has done some good stuff at the plate tracks. But I don't know, man. There's some other guys that are interchangeable with Byron there. I tell you what. If I'm looking at the odds, you gave us the odds the other day. I'm taking Kevin Harvick. Uh Those are big, long odds. And, I mean, Harvick – can't you just see him coming through here? I, I'm going to say Kevin Harvick. Yeah, it's kind they of got, a dark horse. Yeah. So the odds have you know Denny Chase, Ryan Blaney, Joey, or Denny Chase and Ryan Blaney are at twelve to one. They got Joey Larson and Bush at fourteen to one. I think Joey b- belongs in that first group. Yeah, he does. Larson does not belong on this page. Like no, he is. He doesn't like plate racing. He he claims to be you know. Not enthused about it. Doesn't really understand it. Doesn't doesn't fake it. You know, <laughs> he just he doesn't like it. Um, which I think taints his opinion of the Daytona 500 in general as the Great American Race or the or the biggest race of the year. Mm-hmm. Right um, now, if he were to win it, he would absolutely be thrilled and and more than happy to to, to celebrate that. But um, I you know with his with his lack of confidence or. Uh, love or passion right. for that style of racing. I don't feel great about his chances. Right. You're defeating yourself before you, you even get to the tunnel. Yeah. Kyle Busch, uh, I think, is a good plate racer, uh, but he's had he's had tough luck. Yeah. I don't what is really, he, 14 to 1? Yeah. 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 Yeah, he has tough luck at Daytona. They got William at 16 to 1 and Ross Chastain at 16 to 1. Ross is an interesting one. I think that's an interesting one. Interesting one, yeah. Can't you see Ross I potentially getting there? I could see up there? Ross winning this race. Yeah, and if he does, he'll definitely wreck Denny on the way up to the front. I don't think so. <laughs> Please. Come they on. have a magnet. No. They're a I magnet. Could, this is absolutely how the Daytona 500 goes. A guy like Ross is, could, is, you know how you get that, you get that feel good story on the pole and you get that, you know, that, that feel good. You know, last year, Cindric wins it, right? Rookie coming in, the two car, a lot of pressure. Guys, you know, if he don't win the Daytona 500, he disappeared, yeah. right, the rest of the season. And so that kind of saved his year. But also, you know, that's a kind of a great way to start your cup career. It was a, it was a big story. The two car is a iconic car in the series and had a new driver that, you know, not a lot of people knew much about or what to expect. Uh, Chastain could come in and absolutely, you know, find his way to victory lane. I'm not going to say he'd luck into it because he's he's won at Talladega. Uh, I think his mentality and attitude absolutely set him up for success at a place like that. Racing at a plate race like Daytona and Talladega is as much about your attitude – in general, to life, your approach to any challenge or challenges, that is as important as the car or anything else that's going to happen that day. All right? If you are the kind of person that is a risk taker, gambler, don't give a damn, go for it, try it, put it out there, let's see what happens kind of guy, right? That's a, that's a pretty solid approach to, to restricted plate racing if you're measured conservative, timid, careful. That is not a great approach. That is a good approach at other racetracks, at most racetracks, at road courses, being sharp but measured and careful and and cautious and protective and getting to the finish. All of those things, you know, work really well at most racetracks. But a lot of times, man, the guy that's sort of the the mover, the shaker, the, the person that's ready to kind of you know, not allow things to to settle, right? Somebody that's always kind of mixing up the, the 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 solution out on the racetrack, like Denny. So everybody goes to the top of the racetrack, right? We've seen it time and time again. Who's the one when we when, when we watch the top twenty or top thirty cars line up at the top 
Oh, we're going to, everybody's okay to ride around. We're all going to ride around. I'm good. I'm in 15th. I'm going to ride. You in 14th, you're going to ride. The guy in 20th, he's good. All right, we're all up here. Let's knock out some laps. Let's get 100 miles in the books here, guys. Who's going to pull out a line and go to the bottom? I would have said Joey, but you're saying Denny. Denny. See, Denny, in the Xfinity, it was Noah. And, you know, there's no, those guys that true. just will not settle. And sit there and go, oh, I don't, this is boring. I ain't doing this shit all day. I'm going to pull out a line. I don't care if I lose 20 spots. I don't, I'm going to do it. And because I'm not going to sit here and ride. This is not what I came here to do today. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'd rather lose than be bored. That's the kind of guy that's going to find himself toward the front or could, you know, could, could upset the, the traditional odds. Okay. So and, also don't you okay, so you're saying attitude is the number one factor. Yeah. Wouldn't you agree that support and teammates or not teammates, but drafting partners or whatever it is, people to go with you is also somewhere up there towards the top? That is, but that's circumstantial. That's coinc that's coincidence. Yeah, you, you don't really have control you have of that. No idea who all right, if the winning car the winning car at the end of the race, the guy that wins the race, right? The car that comes across the finish line. Do you think with 10 to go, he has a freaking clue who's going to be giving him that push? I would say if you're Penske and the teammates and you've been working together all night. How many all, times all have they wrecked each other? On the last, on the last lap Carol. is different. But it I'm ain't. saying is that I think that, that that's what makes the Penske cars for sure so good is that they work together so well. Oh, I mean, during, the, during 400 of the 500 miles, teammates are absolutely going to be working together and helping each other from time to time. Okay. But, I mean, at the end of the race, that last lap, you are taking that push wherever it comes. Wherever it comes. That's From fair. whoever. Would you and then and also are you willing to block? Everybody's willing to block. Not everybody. I mean, D D Denny talked about that's where Denny says he and Joey are completely different. Like he thinks Joey's aggressive. He's he doesn't think he is. Denny, I would er, Denny doesn't think Denny is, yeah. not Joey. Denny, Denny. anybody all right, you're coming off turn two, you got a two car length lead white flag. It, the two car lengths is too big. By the time you get to the end of the back straightaway, the car or cars are coming from behind are, are going to be there. Denny is moving in front of one of those lines. He actually gave an example of where he didn't and lost the race. Well, a block to Denny is, is probably something very aggressive that we would commonly see from Logano. Mm. I call... I mean, Denny is going to impede a line. He's not going to just pull. He's not just going to sit there and say, all right, everybody go by. He's going to pull down in front of somebody. And I think Denny's a one-move guy in terms of when he chooses which way he's going to go, that's his choice. He's not going to move back and forth. Now, Legato, he might make six or seven blocks down the back straightaway. All right? I'm on the, I'm on the team of you get one block, you get one move. You choose once, and that's your choice, right? Because I'm you're going to lose momentum. Because you're going to, you know, th well, there's I think it be just becomes dangerous. Or yeah, you're just not going to get away. It's with terribly it. freaking dangerous to try to pull down. Oh damn! I pulled down to block the bottom, but the top's the one I should have pulled up. I'm gonna pull up in front of them. That's when the wrecks happen. Yeah. All right. So, but that's what Joey's willing to do. Joey's willing to be wrecked if it means that he might, you know, I'm gonna block the lane I should block. Denny and me, or or other drivers, there's it's 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 different theories, but that's not nothing. I mean, you know, Joey's going to do what Joey wants to do. He's done told us, but so I'm not going to fault him. He he owns it. But Denny and me, and I think I think Denny and I are pretty similar. It, you come off the corner and you hit and you get one choice, right? Which is going to be? I'm going to block this guy. I'm going to block that guy. You pick one, and that's the one you picked. And once you've chosen that, that's what you stick with all the way down the back straightaway off into three. And you hope that if even if you might have chosen incorrectly initially, that by the time you come through three and four and off of the turn to take the checker, that somehow you've recovered or the line that you chose is now moving forward. I mean, it. I'm like, man, I, I'm going to make the move that I think I need to make on the back straightaway or wherever to block. I'm going to make it once and – I'm going to hope that that's the choice that I, I needed to make. If not, I'm not willing to destroy myself. That's exactly how I think you would say, like, yeah, if at some point you are, uh, you're just going to get wrecked. Yeah. If you just are moving chicane all yeah. over the place on the last lap, that's right? right? Yeah. So who's your pick? Who, who do you think is going to win? Uh, do, or do you want to wait till Thursday when you see how they qualify? 
Well, I mean, we can change our minds. Of course but we can. I think right out of the gate, I, I dude, I'm telling you, Chastain's that's speaking mm. to me a little bit. And I could see Daytona just has that potential to be that little that sort of storybook. And man, the track house story has been incredible. It's been electric. And it would be an it would be an amazing way to kick off a season with a win from that team and Chastain, right? Yeah, he's a he's a polarizing individual. Uh, he doesn't always want to be, but he he's a hard charger and 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 you know rubs some fenders on the racetrack, which we all like. So we all want him in the mix. We all want him in the mix of the season, right? We want him. That win at Daytona would lock him into the playoffs. We know we're going to get Chastain all year long, right? Chastain's going to be a contender all year with a win at Daytona. So <clears throat> I could see uh, – I'm, I'm going to go uh, Ross Chastain is the winner of the Daytona 500. All right. I'm going Kevin Harvick as a dark horse but a winner. I'm going to, go, I'm going to ride with that for a while. You are. Until right. I change my mind. Yeah, we're definitely coming uh, Thursday with some different, That's different right. opinions, I'm sure. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you like that video, you'll love the entire podcast. The Dale Jeter Download, it's available on all major podcast platforms.